Manuel Tiny Y. Bundok was the youngest general of the Philippine Revolutionary Army and was elected governor of the province of Nueva Ecija, Republic of the Philippines in 1907. On March 29, 2015 Lica, Nueva Ecija, dedicated the very first monument of General Manuel Bundok Tinio during its 120th anniversary as a municipality. Antecedents 2. The family was the largest landowner in central Luzon, if not the entire Philippines, prior to the declaration of martial law. The Tainios, like the Rizals, are of Chinese descent. An archival document from San Fernando, Pampanga dated 1745 describes a certain Domingo Tainio as a Chino Cristiano or baptized Chinese. Juan Tainio, the first ancestor on record had twin sons who were baptized in Gapan in 1750. In the baptismal record he is described as an Indio natural, a native Filipino. From this it can be deduced that either his grandfather or an earlier ancestor was a pure-blooded Chinese. Juan Tainio's great-grandson, Mariano Tainio Santiago, was the father of Manuel Tainio. Mariano and his siblings, originally named Santiago, changed their family name to Tainio, their mother's family name, in accordance with Gov. Gen. Narci So Claveria's second decree of 1850 requiring all Indios and Chinese mestizos to change their family names if these were saint names. Although he was a native of San Isidro, Nueva Ecija, Mariano eventually settled in Lica, then a barrio of Aliaga beside Lake Canerum, and carved out rice fields from the heavily forested area. Having served as Cabeza de Barangay of the place, he came to be known as Cabazang Mariano Pulang Buhok. Although he eventually became a big landowner, he lived very simply on his lands. Mariano was a man of strong principles, and even led a petition to the governor-general denouncing the corruption and abuses of the alcalde mayor, the governor of Nueva Ecija, and asking for his recall. Cabisang Mariano married several times and, in the fashion of the time, engaged in extramarital affairs, siring numerous progeny. His fourth and last wife was Silvaria Misadsad Bundok of Intablado, Kabirao. He died on October 11, 1889 in Likib. Silvaria, a woman of very strong character, lived on until the two decade of the 20th century. Manuel Tainio was born to Silvaria on June 17, 1877 in Lica, a barrio of Aliaga that became an independent municipality in 1890. He was the only son and had two sisters, the eldest, Maximiana, married Valentin de Castro of Licaban Catalina, the youngest, married Clemente Gachali and Hernandez of Malalas Bulacan. Manuel was his mother's favorite, his father having died when Manuel was 12. Early years the young Manuel Tainio learned his Catan, the phonetic ABCs, under an unknown tutor in Licib. Later, he went to the provincial capital where he attended a school in Calabar, San Isidro headed by Don Rufino Villaruz. He continued his studies in Manila in the school run by Don V. Crisilogo. In 1893 he entered San Juan de Letran, where he pursued his segunda on Sonianza or high school studies until 1896. Manuel Tainio was said to have been a mischievous student, but a born leader. As was the custom of the time, the students tended to gravitate into regional groups. Naturally, Manuel became the leader of the Novo Essayanaus. He and his friends pulled a prank, which cost him his graduation. The teenage Manuel Tainio and his Barcada had just come from an Arnish de Mana match in the Jardin Botanico and were on their way back to Intramuros when they saw a Spaniard bicycling towards them. Dared by his friends, Manuel pushed the cyclist and everyone ran away in glee as soon as the man fell. The furious Spaniard, who turned out to be an officer of the Guardia Civil, recognized Manuel. That night, several civil guards came knocking at the boarding house where Manuel was staying. Tinio and his fellow boarders, wondering at the commotion, peeped through a hole on the floor and saw the soldiers. 
Realizing that he was going to be arrested Manuel jumped out of a window for his dear life and fled to Lica, his hometown. This was the first of many such narrow escapes in his remarkable life. 1896 and the Revolution Manuel Tainio, then 18 years old, joined the Katipunan in April 1896. By August he had organized a company composed of friends, relatives and tenants. Personally leading his group of teenaged guerrillas, he conducted raids and depredations against Spanish detachments and patrols in Nueva Recia. Occasionally, he joined up with similar forces under other youthful leaders. On September 2, 1896, Manuel Tainio and his men joined the combined forces of Mariano Clanera and Pantaleon Belmont. Capitanis Municipalis or Mayors of Cabirao and Gapan, respectively, in the attack on San Isidro. A 3,000 who volunteered, 500 determined men were chosen for the attack, led by a bamboo orchestra or music on Bumbong of Cabirao. The force came in two separate columns from Cabirao and Gapan City and converged in Sitio Pulu, 5 kilometers from San Isidro. Despite the fact that they had only 100 rifles, they furiously fought the Spaniards holed up in the Casa Tribunal, the arsenal, other government buildings and in the houses of Spanish residents. Captain Joaquin Macorro, commander of the Guardia Civila, was killed on the first day of battle. According to Julio Tainio, Manuel's cousin and a participant in the battle, Manuel had a conference in the arsenal with Antonio Luna and Eduardo Clanera, the general's son, immediately after the battle. The Spanish authorities hastily organized a company of 200 civilian Spaniards and mercenaries the following day and attacked the overconfident insurgents, driving the besiegers away from the government center. The next day more Spanish reinforcements arrived from Penaranda, forcing the poorly armed rebels to retreat, leaving behind 60 dead. The Spaniards went in hot pursuit of the insurgents, forcing those from Cabirao to flee to Candebar, Pampanga, and those from Gapan to hide in San Miguel de Mayumo in Bulacan. The insurgents from San Isidro fled across the river to hide in Aen. The relatives of those who were recognized were driven away from their homes by the colonial authorities. Manuel Tainio and his troops stayed to protect the mass of people from Calabar, San Isidro, who were all his kinfolk, hastening across the river to Jan, Nueva Recia. The Spaniards' relentless pursuit of the rebels forced him to disband and go into hiding until January 1897. Tainio was a special target. At 5 feet 7 inches tall, he literally stood out among the attackers, whose average height was below 5 feet. He fled to Likib. A platoon of Cazadors was sent to arrest him, forcing Hilario Tainio Yango, his first cousin and the Capitan Municipal of the town, to lead them to him. Warned of the approaching soldiers, Manuel again escaped and fled on foot back to San Isidro, where, in the barrios of Calabar, Alua and Sto, Cristo, he hid with relatives in their various farms beside the Rio Gapan. Fear of arrest compelled him to be forever on the move. He never slept in the same place. Later on, he would attribute his ill health in his middle age to the privations he endured during those months of living exposed to the elements. 1897. The passionate rebels reorganized their forces the moment Spanish pursuit died down. Tainio and his men marched with Gen. Clanera in his sorties against the Spaniards. Clanera eventually made Tainio a captain. The aggressive exploits of the teenager Manuel Tainio reached the ears of General Emilio Aguinaldo, whose forces were being driven out of Cavite and Laguna, Philippines. He evacuated to Mount Pure in Montalban, Rizal and called for an assembly of patriots in June 1897. In that assembly, Aguinaldo appointed Mamerto Natividad, Jr., as commanding general of the Revolutionary Army and Mariano Clanera as vice commander with the rank of LT, General. Manuel Tainio was commissioned a colonel and served under Gen. Natividad. The constant pressure from the army of Gov. Gen. 
Primo de Rivera drove Aguinaldo to central Luzon. In August, Gen. Aguinaldo decided to move his force of 500 men to the caves of BIAC Narbato in San Miguel, Bulacan because the area was easier to defend. There, his forces joined up with those of Gen. Clan Era. With the help of Pedro Paterno, a prominent Philippines lawyer, Aguinaldo began negotiating a truce with the Spanish government in exchange for reforms, an indemnity, and safe conduct. On August 27, 1897, Gen. Mamerto Natividad and Col. Manuel Tainio conducted raids in Carmen, Tharagoatha and Penaranda, Nueva Ecija. Three days later, on the 30th, they stormed and captured Santa with the help of the townspeople. They stayed in that town till September 3rd. On September 4th, with the principal objective of acquiring provisions lacking in BIAC Narbato, Gen. Natividad and Col. Manuel Tainio united their forces with those of Col. Casimiro Tainio, Gen. Pio del Pilar Col. José Power and Eduardo Clanera for a dawn attack on Aliaga. Thus began the Battle of Aliaga, considered one of the most glorious battles of the rebellion. The rebel forces took the church and convent, the Casa Tribunal and other government buildings. The commander of the Spanish detachment died in the first moments of fighting, while those who survived were locked up in the thick wall jail. The rebels then proceeded to entrench themselves and fortify several houses. The following day, Sunday the 5th, the church and convent as well as a group of houses were put to the torch due to exigencies of defense. Spanish Governor-General Primo de Rivera fielded 8,000 Spanish troops under the commands of Gen. Ricardo Monet and Gen. Nunez in an effort to recapture the town. A column of reinforcements under the latter's command arrived in the afternoon of September 6. They were met with such a tremendous hail of bullets that the general, two captains and many soldiers were wounded, forcing the Spaniards to retreat a kilometer away from the town to await the arrival of Gen. Monet and his men. Even with the reinforcements, the Spaniards were overly cautious in attacking the insurgents. When they did so, the next day, they found the town already abandoned by the rebels who had gone back to BIAC Narbato. Filipino casualties numbered 8 dead and 10 wounded. Gen. Natividad and Col. Manuel Tainio shifted to guerrilla warfare. The following October with full force they attacked San Rafael, Bulacan to get much needed provisions for BIAC Narbato. The battle lasted several days and, after getting what they came for, they left a detachment in Bo, Cayenne to hold back the Spanish reinforcements from Balawag, Bulacan, to divert Spanish forces from Nueva Ecija, Natividad and Tainio attacked Tayug, Pangasinan on October. 4, 1897, occupying the church in the heart of the population. Meanwhile, peace negotiations continued and in October Aguinaldo gathered together his generals to convene a constitutional assembly. On NOV 1, 1897 the constitution was unanimously approved and on that day the BIAC Narbato Republic was established. However, Gen. Natividad, who believed in the revolution, opposed the peace negotiations and continued to fight indefatigably from BIAC Narbato. On NOV. 9, while leading a force of 200 men with Gen. Pio del Pilar and Col. Ignacio Power, Natividad was killed in action in Entablado, Cabirao. Col. Manuel Tainio brought the corpse back to the general's grieving wife in BIAC Narbato. With the death of the army's commanding general, Col. Manuel Tainio was commissioned brigadier general and designated as commanding general of operations on NOV. 20, 1897. Gen. Tainio, all of 20 years, became the youngest general of the Philippine Revolutionary Army. On deck, 20, 1897, the Pact of the BIAC Narbato was ratified by the Assembly of Representatives. 
In accordance with the terms of the peace pact, Aguinaldo went to Seul, Pangasinan, where he and 26 members of the revolutionary government boarded a steamer to go into voluntary exile in Hong Kong. The Novo Seu now in the group were Manuel Tinio, Mariano and Eduardo Clanera, Benito and Joaquin Natividad, all signatories of the constitution, in Hong Kong. The exiles agreed among themselves to live as a community and spend only the interest of the initial P-400,000 the Spanish government had paid in, accordance with the Pact of the BIAC Narbato. The principle was to be used for the purchase of arms for the continuation of the revolution at a future time. The Artacho faction, however, wanted to divide the funds of the revolution among themselves. The Novo Seu Naus did not vote with the opportunist Artacho faction, and, being relatively well off, thanks to a relative who provided them with funds, they got a house where they live like a republic, as they said. 1898. Would history have been different if the Spanish authorities had not reneged on the terms of the pact and withheld the amount of P900,000 which was supposed to have been divided among non-combatants who had suffered in the fighting, thus short-changed, considering themselves no longer honor-bound to lay down arms, the revolutionists rose again. Once again fighting broke out all over Luzon. In Nueva Recia, the rebels captured the towns again one by one, but American intervention was on the way. As early as February 1898 an American naval squadron had steamed into Manila Bay. On May 1, less than a week after the declaration of the Spanish-American War, the American naval squadron completely destroyed the Spanish fleet. Admiral Dewey of the United States of America immediately dispatched the revenue cutter McCulloch to Hong Kong to fetch Aguinaldo, who returned to the Philippines on May 19. On May 21, Aguinaldo issued a proclamation asking the nation to rally behind him in a second attempt to obtain independence. Revolutionary leaders promptly stepped up their raids and ambuscades on Spanish garrisons in central Luzon, capturing more than 5,000 prisoners. By the end of May, the whole of central and southern Luzon, except Manila, was practically in Filipino hands. Aguinaldo promptly established a dictatorial government on May 24, with himself as Supremo and proclaimed Philippine independence on June 12, 1898. Apolinario Mabini, however, prevailed upon Aguinaldo to decree the establishment of a revolutionary government on June 23. 